This is a $30 Chromebook I picked up. Let's find out if I got a good deal. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery. And what we got here today is a Chromebook that I picked up at a pawn shop. And I like to stop by pawn shops and see what they've got in stock and uh, see what they're giving away. And this was sitting up on a shelf and it had a sticker on it that said $30, parts only. And I asked the guy, hey, what does that mean, parts only? He said, something's not working on it. So I said, okay, let me go ahead and check it out for 30 bucks. And it came with a charger. So worst case scenario, it's a decent Samsung 30 watt USB-C charger. So at least I got something for 30 bucks. But we're gonna find out today what's wrong with it and uh, and see if it's worth more than the 30 bucks for me. So the first thing I obviously did was flip the thing over and look down here at the serial number and the, the model number and everything and Googled that and it's a Samsung model XE520QAB. So a quick little Google search later found that this is called the Samsung Chromebook Plus version 2. So the Chromebook Plus was like one of their first really high-end Chromebooks and this is the version 2 which has a little bit of differences to it. A uh, better processor but uh, you know maybe a, a different screen. So the specs on it are actually pretty good for a Chromebook and it should be because this was a $500 device when it was sold new and that was just a couple of years ago so it's not super old. Um, so it's it's got some decent specs. It's got a Celeron processor. It's got four gigs of RAM. It's got 32 gigs of eMMC. A lot of that's kind of standard, um, but the Celeron's a little bit nicer than maybe like a Snapdragon or something. So it's got a little bit of beef to it. It's got a pretty decent looking screen. You can see that it's missing a couple of the little rubber feet. And I'm wondering, there is a little screw under each of these. I wonder if someone did try to take this thing apart at some point. So since they did half the work for me, I may go ahead and do the other half of the work and take the other two screws, or take all the screws out and take the lid off and see what's underneath there. Probably not going to be doing a lot of you know heavy work underneath the hood because there's not much you can do with these things. But at least we're going to see you know what it's, what's working, what's not, and find out if there's some kind of use that we can do with it. So after I googled it and found out that it's a you know decent model, that it's worth something at least looking into, then the next thing obviously was to turn it on and boot it up and see what happens. And the screen looks great. It is a touch screen and it came with on the side down here a little stylus that pops out. So you, you know it's high quality when it's got a little stylus built into it. And what I've found out is this trackpad doesn't work. So that's the uh, the parts only. This thing is broken part of it. The trackpad doesn't work. So I'm going to grab a mouse and see if I can get a mouse to work and test out the keyboard and everything. But so far it powers up. Um, the screen looks good. Just no mouse yet. So I got me a cheap little mouse here, USB. And looking at the ports, on the left side here we've got two USB-C's, a, a headphone jack, and then there's actually a micro SD reader in here that's got a micro SD card smashed in there so I'm gonna go ahead and try to remove that and then on the right hand side here we've got the volume control the little stylus there power button and then a full-size USB-A so that's handy considering we're gonna need that USB-A to test out this mouse and hey there we go so we've got mouse. Let's go ahead and fire up Google and test the keyboard out. Looks like looks like everything works on the keyboard pretty good. So we got a, a working Chromebook at this point for thirty bucks, and again, not too bad specs. At this point, let's go ahead and shut it down. I, I am curious enough to go look underneath the back side of it just to see if there's anything that's that jumps out at me and I want to try to get this uh, micro SD card out of here. So first things first let's go ahead and I shut this thing down 
I want to try to get this SD card out of here, which I tried with my finger and was unsuccessful. So I grabbed a couple tools out of my trusty Strabetto toolkit. I use this thing for all my upgrades and all my repairs. If you're looking for a toolkit, that's the best one you can find. I'll put a link down in the description below. So let's see if we can get some tweezers in there. Not quite. Let's see if this little flat dude will get in there. There we go. So I got him pried out enough. And there we go. Little 32 big card. It is very crusty. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can see that. That's pretty crusty, so I don't know if something was spilled in there or someone just have booger fingers throwing it in there. But I'm probably not going to use that anymore. I will probably try to test out this port, see if it still works. But again, nice, uh, nice setup where it's got both USB-C ports here. That way, at least there's probably some expandability you can do. You know, add some more ports to it with a uh, little breakout box or dongle. Break it out to HDMI. I think it said that if you have the right kind of adapter, you can get this thing to put output maybe up to 4K TV. So I don't know if we need to have a 4K Chromebook, but uh, the option's there. So let's go ahead and flip this thing over. I'll grab my driver and uh, we'll take these screws out and just pop the hood and see what's under there. All right, so I popped the other two of these little uh, feet off of here. And sure enough, there is two more screws. So grabbed my uh, drive kit out of my Strabito kit with the uh, Phillips Zero bit. And let's go ahead and take these four screws out. All right, I got the four screws out. This one is still in there, but it's completely loosened. And I'm not sure if this thing's got some clips underneath it. Sounds like it. So I can grab a spudger, or it's actually coming out pretty easy just by the fingers. And this is plastic, so I don't want to flex it too much. All right, let's go ahead and do the right thing and grab the spudger. I got a couple different options in there, but I'm just going to try the straight one here. There we go. And I did take the stylus out. Doesn't look like it would have gotten in the way, but sometimes I learn the hard way by leaving something in, like an SD card or something, in the case doesn't expect it to still be in there. And there we go. Let's not lose these screws. Let's see what's under there. There we go. All right, so I'm not going to poke around much in here, but just kind of looking around. And sure enough, on this side over here, you can see that something must have been spilled in here or something. Because it's at the same side as the card reader. Yep, looks like it. So, yeah, so over here where that card reader had all that gunk, it is kind of gunked up on the speaker and stuff. So I may uh, try to clean that up a little bit, but... Like I said, I'm not going to poke around too much in here. I'm just going to check some of these easy connections here and just make sure that they're all well seated. Um, that would be an easy thing if something like the trackpad, which I'm guessing is right underneath this battery here, if the trackpad has a cable that, that came loose, um, that would be an easy fix. So let me go ahead and uh, maybe try to clean this up a little bit and then uh, poke on a couple connectors. All right, I cleaned it up a tiny bit. Didn't want to spend too much time on it, but um, I did pop the battery lead off while I was poking around in here. And like I said, I wasn't going to poke around too much. I could take a couple screws out of the battery and take the battery up because the trackpad's going to be underneath there. But 
I didn't see, there's not a whole lot plugged into this main board here, so I'm going to assume that the trackpad is plugging in right here. So this little connector here, which has about five contacts, which sounds about right. So I did pop that up, take it out, and seated it all the way back in and popped it back down. So we'll see if that made any difference. Uh, if I really wanted to, I could probably take this battery out, take the whole assembly out of the trackpad, probably find one for 20 bucks on eBay or something. But not sure at this point if that's even worth it. Um, so let's go ahead and put this thing back together and turn it on, make sure it all still works the way it was a couple minutes ago, and uh, we'll go from there. So as I was putting it back together, I noticed that these uh, little speaker holes here, right above where those speakers were, and this is obviously where whatever that gunk was found its way into the laptop. So this is why you don't have open holes on speaker holes. Um, it's just begging to be poured liquid into. So let's go ahead and flip this thing back over, turn it back on, and see if I did anything good or bad to it. All right, the good news is I didn't break anything. The bad news is the trackpad still doesn't work. So it just must be defective. I don't know if maybe some liquid did get in there and, and mess something up or if it's just been abused. The overall condition of this thing is, is pretty decent. It's pretty good. There is some gunk everywhere, but that's uh, to be expected. Um, this is a pretty unique device in the sense that it's got two cameras. We've got a camera up here where you normally see them. And we got a camera down here also. And that's because this thing is a 360 and you can flip it all the way down into tablet mode. And when you flip it into tablet mode, this becomes your back camera, kind of like this one right here on my iPad is. So that's kind of neat. And it's actually a pretty uh, high megapixel. I forget the exact number, but it's, it's pretty good uh, camera on there. So I've set the resolution here to uh, 1080p. It is at a 1080p native screen, but it just makes everything real small when it's when you're looking at it here. Um, but if you were to have this on a desktop, it would look pretty good. But it's not too bad here. I'm obviously looking at it with a camera. It's a little small, but this is actually how I'd want to use it. It was defaulted to 1200 by 750. So that's what it's defaulted to, which obviously makes it very easy to read. But you just lose all your desktop. There's just like nothing there. So you can scale it anywhere in between. 1600 by 1000 might be a good happy medium, but uh, but 1920 by actually it's 1920 by 1200, so it is a little bit taller. This is a 16 by 10 aspect ratio instead of a 16 by 9, so it gives you a little bit more height when you're browsing. So overall, it's a, a pretty nice screen, and the the touch screen does work pretty good. So let's go ahead and flip this thing over into tablet mode and give it a test real quick. So here it is in tablet mode, and as soon as I flip the screen around, it kind of put it in this almost Android-looking thing, uh, dis display. And I did turn my overhead light off because it was giving way too much glare, and there's still a lot of glare there. But this is basically pretty much an honest-to-goodness Chrome tablet. So it's definitely not as, as lightweight as you know, a 12-inch a tablet would be a little little heavy to be a 12-inch a tablet on your lap all day long, but it does give it some uh, some decent functionality as far as being a, a, a broken device. So for 30 bucks, again, not a bad deal if you, if you want to use something like this. And you get the Play Store, so you can actually go in and download Android apps right to this now that Chromebook supports the Play Store. So speaking of going to the App Store and finding an Android app, we got the uh, Marvel Unlimited app right here. And this would make a, a really nice uh, comic book reader for, you know, a 12-inch 12, 12 screen. This is a, just about the right size for comic books. And you can actually do things with this app that you can't do with comic books. So for 30 bucks again, this... If, if you're used to using an iPad Pro to read your comics, then this thing would drive you absolutely crazy because performance-wise, it's nowhere near the same. Responsiveness, it's okay, but it's just not nowhere near the same. We're not comparing apples to apples, obviously. No no pun intended. But but for 30 bucks, uh, if you wanted a device that you could just load up a bunch of comics on, 
taking on a flight or just read it on the couch, then this is a, a great way to go. And again, sorry for the glare, but I figured I'd go ahead and try out a game while I'm in the App Store. So we got... It's actually playing pretty pretty decent. Again, if you're used to a high-end tablet, then this will feel a little awkward, a little little chunky. But for thirty bucks again, who cares? It's it's serving a purpose for sure. All right, one last thing I wanted to try out. Hooked up a little game pad, loaded up a classic game here. And let's play some RC Pro-Am. So there's several different ways to accomplish this on a Chromebook since it's running Android. And actually this is not even requiring Android. This is just running right out of the browser. And this is something that will make this thing a great little portable. Bring it with you anywhere. Plug in a a gamepad you can even use a Bluetooth gamepad and uh, just go to town so this is gonna be fun this is a good little portable gaming station nothing wrong with that so I think I've come to the conclusion that this is definitely worth 30 bucks it's definitely not worth the 500 bucks that someone originally paid for it but uh, that that was several years ago that was I think 2019 was a date that I found uh, on the manufacturer uh, date of the battery so it was probably a 2019, 2020 model, and 500 bucks back then might have been a great machine, but uh, 30 bucks, even better machine. So that's going to wrap it up for this little video. Let me know down in the comments below what other things I could try out with this Chromebook for 30 bucks. Tell me if there's something else you want me to try on it. I can shoot a video of it. But hopefully you guys got something out of this. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and give me that thumbs up. That helps out the algorithm. And if you want to see more crazy stuff like this, hit that subscribe button. But thank you as always for watching, and until next time, peace out and geek out.